While birds might not be my favorite group of animals, or the most popular to feature on the channel, I'll be darned if they don't have their merits. Here in the southeastern US, we have hundreds of avian species that utilize a huge variety of different body plans and fulfill many distinctive ecological niches. Of these, my favorites are often the predatory species that hunt down terrestrial or sometimes aquatic vertebrates. On the aquatic side of the equation, few birds are quite as fun for me to observe or film as the double-crested cormorant. These are some pretty weird looking animals, boasting a long and slender neck, stubby legs, and an elongated beak capped off with a small hook. When looked at separately, it might not be obvious that these adaptations actually come together to make cormorants some of the most adept fishing birds in this part of the world. Rather than diving out of the air or wading through shallow water in pursuit of prey, cormorants have evolved a much more unique feeding method. These birds take the chase underwater. Diving to depths of nearly 25 feet and aided by their strong legs and hydrodynamic body, Cormorants are just as formidable an underwater predator as any large fish or other aquatic vertebrate. Holding their breath for over a minute and using incredibly keen vision to spot prey, cormorants will chase down everything from fish to amphibians to crustaceans. The strong and flexible neck is used to provide extra reach, and the hook beak easily detains even the slipperiest of prey. While small meals can be swallowed underwater, larger items must be carried to the surface to be properly consumed. Lacking teeth, cormorants swallow their prey whole, and actually produce pellets composed of bones, scales, and other undesirable parts of their food that are very similar to the pellets produced by owls. Watching a cormorant engulf its prey feels like a mini version of Jurassic Park and is a great reminder that birds are quite literally modern day dinosaurs. Deep diving in cold water is exhausting work, and because cormorants are not fully waterproof, sunning and preening are common activities throughout the day. This helps the birds raise their internal body temperature between dives without expending excess energy, and is very similar to the hunting habits seen in semi-aquatic reptiles such as water snakes. Oftentimes, preferred roosting spots in the sunshine are utilized by many cormorants at once, and these communal colonies can occasionally exceed hundreds of individuals. There are very few other freshwater birds in this part of the world that can come close to matching a cormorant in dive depth or time, which means that this species fulfills a nearly irreplaceable ecological niche in the ecosystems where they live. Cormorants are often the only birds that can access and provide population checks on prey species that live lower down in the water column, which also means that they are among the only species transferring nutrients from the depths of aquatic ecosystems back into the shallow water or terrestrial areas. Without cormorants, nutrients could become trapped in those lower depths and never make it back up to be used by shallow water aquatic vegetation or animals. While these birds were once nearly wiped out as a result of pesticides such as DDT, this is an adaptable species, and after the ban of those chemicals, cormorant populations experienced a huge rebound. The species can now be found throughout the majority of North and Central America during different times of the year, so if you grab a pair of binoculars and head down to your local water body, you just might catch a glimpse of these incredible birds that swim. Alright everyone, that's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the Double Crested Cormorant. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video, and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content, coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram pages at The Wild Report for photos and video clips from my adventures. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino, of The Wild Report, signing out.